Hello, I'm Nicola, and as part of Scottish Interfaith Week 2020, celebrating Scotland's religious diversity, I'm very happy to introduce Lama Yeshi Losara Rinpoche, Abbot of Samueling Monastery, which is the first and largest Tibetan monastery in the West, located in Dumfries. Lama will be chatting with Francis Hume, the National Development Officer from Interfaith Scotland which is the organisation that established this annual gathering of events. So we've called this online event Buddhism and the Environment, and Francis has kindly offered to pose some questions to Lama on a subject that is very topical at the moment. With the introductions over, I'll pass you over to Francis. Thank you very much, Nicola. I'm delighted to have been asked to interview Lama Yeshi today, and we're also very delighted that you've chosen the environment as your chosen topic to speak on. Care for the environment is very close to our hearts at Interfaith Scotland, and indeed was the theme for Scottish Interfaith Week back in 2015, and will be again in 2021 in the lead up to the delayed COP26 in Glasgow. This year, the theme for Scottish Interfaith Week is connecting, and connecting to the natural world is of course vital for the future sustainability of our planet. At Interfaith Scotland, we've taken forward a number of projects to assist with this, with resources on our website, including our Sacred Earth booklet, and the World Interfaith Harmony Grove, where anyone can purchase a tree that would be planted in Scotland under the Trees for Life programme. So without further ado, I have a number of questions here to pose to Lama Yeshi and looking forward to hearing everything that you have to say to us today. So my first question is, concern for the environment is I know an area close to your heart. Where did this passion and enthusiasm for attention on the environment come from? First of all, you are asked the right person here as coming from Buddhist country in my own my, uh, country, Tibet. Every monastery protects the environment. So nobody can, uh, we call even cut a tree or kill animal or even uh, uh, take anything which is not given to you. So there is this uh, respect of Mother Earth. And this is how I start here in even in Scotland. Ever since I took over Holy Isle, I managed to plant 20 or 40,000 indigenous trees, but also in Buddhism, inner peace leads to world peace means we have to cultivate our own mind in the most productive, most positive, most kindest way, so then everything is possible. So here in also Samueli, we have been planting a lot of trees. Every Sangha is participating. So what we should do is that it's our duty that previously, because I think your own culture, tradition, people become very selfish. Everybody was for themselves. That's when you see why things went wrong so badly, because everybody just followed the selfish path. So they never thought future generation, future generation have no future. The uh, we call earlier age people have uh, sort of consumed, taking everything out from Mother Earth whether it's cutting tree or mineral or oil. So it is now becoming, obviously, we are all paying the price for this. See unpredictability of climate change. There is where there is not meant to be rain. There is a heavy, heavy flood coming. If there is meant to be rain, there is no rain. So it's all because due to uh, 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 greediness. So due to corona disease now brought us together. That's called Buddhism interconnectedness. Means now you can see rich people can't get away. And also we are all subject to uh, this disease. There's no discrimination. 
So due to this, now people start slowly, slowly thinking of others. Ever since I came here, I always took charge of my own action. I never throw any one spoon of food out. I only take what I want to eat. Remaining throwing food out is wastage number one, which we can all uh, participate not to throw food away. There are how many people dying of starvation around the world. We can always feed those people. And then we should not indulge everything. We don't need many things like due to this corona disease. Now everybody is so afraid of death. So when the death comes, then what are you going to do with all your millions of pounds or something? You can't take that with you. Meaningless number, give your headache. But the wonderful people also now coming out from every corner, like this footballer. He is giving his own millions of pounds for poor people, feeding poor people, because he suffered, he said, when he was young. His mother couldn't feed. Because he's totally committed to this, now many even business people say they're going to come up to do the same thing. Even in Scotland, we have been uh, giving food for many, many people in Glasgow, uh, uh, one of the prime sites. But Buddhist philosophy is we never tell those who are receiving food who is giving them food. We're not trying to promote our organization. My brother says, these people already feel so low. These people already feel they're useless. Why do you even punish them, thinking now they're getting food, so they owe something to you? So no promotion. And don't just give anything what is ordinary. Give the very best. Even giving, it should be like offering, not throwing, say, okay, as you have. So there's so many ways we can change, you see. And also I was, uh, participating, Scottish Interfaith Council. It's a wonderful organization because it's backed up by the government. Nicholas Sargent, she's so wise, so kind human being. She's giving a lot of resources for Scottish Interfaith Council to function it. You can publish these nice books. So they are young people have a choice of asking, questioning. So now we really need to do is when the finally the meeting come to Scotland to uh, tidy up the uh, France, this uh, uh, called uh, uh, environment, because we want to fully engage, saying we are ready. We have been planting trees. We have been sharing tree for life. I am even suggesting uh, like above Loch Ness, there's uh, thousands of hectares of prime land and somebody saying they might use this for hunting ground. I said no one is ever allowed to be use this to be hunting ground. These animal lovers, the Buddhists who like to protect life. We should start to plant tree for life. We should plant the trees there. And we should plant wherever is necessary. So we should make a commitment, pledge ourselves. We will all plant the trees. Not only that, we will plant seeds of loving, kindness, for, uh, forbearance, uh, 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 always forgiveness, always, always remember to be unconditional. That's real, the Buddhist essence is unconditional. When we do something for others, if we expect something in return, that's not good. It's not exchange, it's unconditional. So it's like, you know, mother who have 
such unconditional uh, likeness to the little child, just like this. You don't expect anything from child. You're willing to give your life to protect this young child, just like this called unconditional. And the Scottish Interfaith Council, <coughs> even interfaith leaders, a really good understanding. We always respect each other. I was in the biggest mosque in Glasgow. Uh, I was many times in New Hadua, and I also know Hindi. Ajaya Ji is my best friend. And uh, I'm also uh, Elizabeth, sir. <laughs> we know Bishop. So we should, Scottish, actually, we call uh, what is the head of the school and church? The moderator. Moderator? The many years there were always now women moderators. So I feel that if this century is year of women, because there's almost four to one uh, <laughs> racial gender, you know, there's that many women. Even I'm looking in here, you all have <laughs> there in the main there. So you're also supposed to be an uh, essence of wisdom and a compassionate, kind human beings. You make sure every change you're trying to bring is benefit for all humanity. So I would very much like Scottish Interfaith Country Council to continue and build up the tolerance and the loving kindness towards all other human beings. Is what the solution. So maybe I say so many things. <laughs> you've, covered quite, you've covered quite a few of my questions, but I do have a couple left. <laughs> yes, so I would like to give time for you people to ask. Me because you just throw me a question, I'll answer straightforward. Okay? No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you've shared already. Okay. Um, could I ask a little bit more about um, within the Buddhist tradition itself and what it has to say about the harmony between um, people and nature, the different stories within Buddhism and how that wisdom can help us where we are today? Buddhism actually, whether it's a recall, uh, we have Buddha taught 84,000 tons of teaching, which is like a medication for our major poison. Our major poison is being uh, ignorant and stupid. <laughs> because if you're ignorant and stupid, all the, our actions cause so much suffering, so much harm. So if we cure the biggest uh, the poison, then we killed all other brain poisons. So ignorant is don't remain ignorant. Your actions have consequences. Think meaningfully, act meaningfully, do meaningfully, not just uh, whatever you say hurt other people is not right away. Whatever you uh, do is uh, harmful to other people is not the right way. So always trying to uh, reflect uh, your action, the consequences of your action, that means taking responsibility in Buddhism, Buddha teaching always say, Buddha teaching is not there, there to conversion. Buddha teaching is there to empower, teach every one of them how we can do better than what we are already doing. So even religious based in fighting is a disaster. That's no, there's no wisdom. A religion is a wisdom to solve people's suffering, to not to create misery. If, um, uh, if religion-based infight, it creates suffering, it creates misery. So that faith doesn't have any wisdom. So in Buddhism, we say, instead of taking life, give life. So that is the philosophy in Buddhist belief. Thank you very much. You, you've talked a bit about um, 
the ignorance and the selfishness which kind of can lead to the actions that um which have led to some of the press and concerns that we have now i wonder if you could say a little bit um from in your opinion and experience about any practical actions that we could maybe put into practice to help the environment for the future where do you think we should start always start from one's own self don't always say we're waiting for somebody else to take action that's not practical take action from yourself as soon as your brain your mindfulness or awareness remember I'm not going to say anything to hurt other people. I'm not going to do anything to uh, harm other people. I'm going to be doing everything in my mindfulness. So if you're fully aware of your action, then you can't do anything wrong. When I say ignorance, means we don't have the awareness when it's necessary. And then you argue, fight, then everybody gets stressed, unhappy. Then you find a letter on that was not right. That's too late. You already destroyed other people's face and harmony. You already hurt yourself. So we say to build up a good, trustworthy friendship or relationship is very, very difficult. To hurt somebody it takes only one second. Angry word, hurting other people, really saying things what is awfully bad. So remember, start from home. We should all start, change from our own self, saying, I want to make sure from now on I'm making progress. So using the help of mindfulness or meditation, so if people can say one day, oh, I've been watching you. You are much more kinder. You're more relaxed. You're more better person. That is your inner change. People can see this. But if you say, I am practitioner, I am meditator, I am a good in everything, but more you get stressed and very, becomes very impatient, intolerant, you're really doing very badly. <laughs> you're not doing anything useful. You're just, you're managing to stress yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so meditation is a, a key um, in terms of in your personal life and the way that you treat one another. And, um, and that, from that should flow care and protection for, for others and for the environment. Yes, when I was in the Scottish Interfaith Council, many years ago, I said, why not we start to teach simple meditation to every school, every college? Nobody want to agree. They thought the meditation is something to do with the Buddhists. I said, oh, okay, I'll succeed. I'll teach mindfulness to every way. What they forgetting is mind is yours. Time is yours. You can see clearly if you are very stressed, you can't go do things right. If you're very relaxed, if you're really very really back, you can change many things. So meditation means learning to relax. Meditation means calming your mind. So meditation is not Buddhist property. <laughs> it is just name for meditation. I don't know who gave that meditation. I think it's a Christianity name. Yes. <laughs> Um, so often when we go to events and we hear about um, climate change and the effects that this has long term, sometimes people can get a sense of um, hopelessness about the future. So my next question is, if people have felt that it's too late to do anything to reverse the damage of the planet, how could we give people that sense of hope if they're feeling hopeless? No, you're joining the club of hopelessness, people. <laughs> so, so you really, you're feeling so bad because you can see there is no hope. That's not the solution. You have to be more determined. You have to be more committed to say we can all change. Individual people can change. 
I have very many young boys, young girls, all my recall environment warriors. And some of them say they very really find uh, some machine to clean the, under the ocean. And yes, the really young visionaries say, I'm going to clean the ocean. So we managed to have different moods so often, <laughs> so it's like a sky, but we believe the clouds. And the Scottish clouds. One second cloud, today is raining, sunny, raining, sunny, raining, sunny. Don't give in to that. Always lay back, say, no, I'm not the cloud, I'm not the rain. I'm above that. It's called blue sky. That's your very relaxed Buddha mind or clarity is that blue sky. Um you mentioned there about um, younger people and the different um, responses that they've had, for example, um, cleaning up the ocean. And um, often we see it's young people who are particularly energized and concerned about what humans have been doing to the planet and protecting it for the future, obviously for them and, and um, upcoming generations. Do you have any particular advice uh, for young people today? Yes, it's their time. All the people never thought their future. You know that Swedish young girl who now really ignited the young people. All the young people are awakening. Say, we will not follow path of failure. We're going to look for our future. We're going to work for our future. It is a future for young people. So they have to be responsible. So I suggest we as a Scottish Interfaith Council, we should promote, we should help young people to do what they have to do. Absolutely, thank you. And we shall do our very best in that. And we should be the one who should bring our belief together, united for good cause, encourage other people. There is hope. There will be no war in the future in the name of a belief. There will be no path followers of a greedy and failure. It will be victorious path. Victorious path means we are responsible. A matter of time, we're going to change climate. Why? Because nowadays, no airplane hardly fly. Ozone is very clean. This is, sea is already improving. See, it doesn't need much uh, chance to recover. Sea is very wealthy. It can change. Earth is very strong. Look at some corner. There was no sand before. Now it's sand place. Some corner where there's a lot of trees. It's sand place. It's all because of imbalancing of this mother earth. So we should do everything in our atmosphere to say, improve your own state of mind. Take responsibilities in. So Buddhist same say, never ever blame or look fault on others, whether it's your partner, whether your family, whether your uh, whoever you blame, but looking inwardly, then it resolves itself. Especially in relationship, never argue. You'd never debate any human being who want to prove their right and stupidly arguing. You should never argue stupid people. That's what Buddha said. <laughs> this is nothing to win points. Yes, the minute you say, okay, it's all right. You're right. I am sorry. What's wrong with this? Nothing to lose, but everything to gain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank Lama for taking the time to share your thoughts um, and your wisdom. I know it will be really helpful to many, many people. And to you, Francis, for kindly interviewing Lama Rinpoche. It's very much appreciated. Very well. You did very well. You <laughs> remember to be kind. Thank you. Thank Good you night. so much. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.